thank you very much indeed. Um, and as this, uh, this helicopter moves in, um, just... Standing, being discharged. The person on this was an 82-year-old man who'd been knocked down by a bicycle somewhere about 60 miles away. And the reason we're able to do that sort of thing is we've, we've got the wealth of one of the wealthiest cities in the world. I simply turned through 180 degrees in the helicopter and that is the picture I took. You can see the edge of the landing strip there. But I doubt very much if these people selling food on the streets of uh, Nigeria uh, in Abuja would have the same sort of response. Uh, or these people that I saw in, in, uh, in, in the middle of, e uh, in the middle of uh, Cairo, or these hordes and hordes of people throughout Africa. So what on earth is the relevance of the Society of British Neurological Surgeons to global neurosurgery? We contrast this, the opulence, and to be frank, uh, conspicuous expenditure with this in South India. And aren't there more important global health issues than neurosurgery or even surgery? Well, this is the one that I think is the most important health issue we have, which isn't addressed really by anybody. And I have not heard mentioned once in this whole uh, symposium. But that aside, what about things like this? What about malaria? Well, it came as a massive surprise to me to find how small the burden of infectious disease, which has got so much concentration on it, is compared to the burden of, of surgical disease. And it comes as no surprise to anybody in this audience. And so the idea that surgery is too expensive, that it only addresses a small problem, offers short-term relief, this, this is not true. But some of the richer countries of the world uh, would have us believe that it is true because this is the sort of operating theater, operating room that we're being peddled by many. And it is seen that essential that we have to have all the kit and intraoperative MRI and all the rest of it. So what is the history of the SBNS and global neurosurgery? Well, let's start at the things that we're actually probably quite good at and one of them traditionally has been training neurosurgeons from abroad. And some people in this room uh, will have been trained abroad. And here I am misbehaving uh, in the front row of um, a, re a recent joint meeting with the neurologists. And without sending, you know, uh, whatever the word is, racist, count the colored faces, count the white faces, we have a very, very healthy number of trainees um, who, who come to us from low middle income countries and go back. Anybody recognize this person? Some of you here will. This is Khalid Mahmoud. Um, and uh, this is him back in 1998 in Newcastle. Uh, and here he is uh, at, the, at this meeting. Some of them, unfortunately, or fortunately in this case, uh, we get to keep. This is Daniel Golkar. Some of you may know one of the world's greatest neuroradiologists who I had the privilege of working with for 25 years. Um, and here's a very old picture. You'll see me up there on the, on the top right. Um, and look again at this. Here's a chap with a circle around him up there. Uh, and here he is now. He went back to Tanzania. Very, very challenging circumstances when I met him at this meeting. He'd been shot recently in the hip at point blank range, uh, but was still getting on very well. And many of you all know Moody Qureshi, and these two probably need a little introduction, Harry Chandran and uh, Ramos Karolas in Singapore and uh, in Kuala Lumpur. It's not just in, in public sector, this is a private sector here in Abuja. One of our re more recent trainees has built and set up his own hospital uh, and here he is very, very proud of that. However, going back to this photograph, um, anybody recognize the chap with a circle around him there? Well, it's Graham Teasdale. Um, many, many years ago. And of course, Graham uh, 
brings us on to the subject of international research projects, which I think the SBNS has been fairly important in, the Glasgow Coma Scale, obviously, um, but STITCH, which we've heard a bit about, and also ISAT, and uh, coordinating some of the craniectomy trials that we've heard about as well. And I think we, I hope that we fight above our weight in that environment. More recently, we've come on to international examinations. Um, and here, again, some of my friends and colleagues, previous president, they're misbehaving in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, and here they are uh, uh, taking the exam. Uh, and this is the Joint Surgical Colleges, Colleges Fellowship Examination, which is very, very important, I think, in helping to set standards, because there's no point in, calling, in coming abroad, training, going back, calling yourself a neurosurgeon without some sort of standard that we can set and some sort of standard we can work to. And I think the International Fellowship Examinations uh, will help to do that. The same, again, uh, here in Sri Lanka, with a bunch of reprobates all ha having a good time while doing, I think, very good work. Now, we're not terribly good at conferences. Every now and then we do a joint conference. We invite people from abroad to come to the UK and we have a, you know, we, we have a so called joint conference with 20 people from abroad. Um, but we're not very good at going abroad ourselves. We're very, for, for somewhere which went and thought it might colonize the entire world a couple of centuries ago, we've retrenched and become rather inward looking and rather inward focusing. However, recently, I'm, uh, one of my drives is to try to improve this. And, and, and here we are recently uh, in, in Chennai. Um, and it's not all work, you know, as we found out at this meeting. Any of you ever spotted any of us at the WFNS? On the SBNS committee, there's a WFNS representative, and every time we have a meeting, they uh, tell us what's going on, the WFNS, and we say, that's very nice, thank you very much, and we don't go. Um, and this was a, a fantastic meeting that many of you would be at in, in Serbia earlier in the year. Uh, and I am the incoming president, in fact, of, of the SBNS, as from next September, and it's no secret that I'm wanting to try to stop us being inward looking to start looking out, to start participating, and particularly to become involved in global neurosurgery. And the first conference that I will be personally hosting, that is going to be the theme of it. Sporting international projects. Um, this is something, again, that I think is not something that we can do sitting on our backsides at home. And this chap, you may recognize from an earlier picture, uh, Shudambata, and he has personally with the help of his local government, set up two new hospitals, a pediatric hospital and an adult one. And what they're trying to do is have a, a public-private partnership with the government, uh, with a sort of some private patients, some government money funding a bulk of, uh, of poor, of local patients. And if this works, it's going to be a model not just for Nigeria, but possibly even for the whole of Africa. And here we are meeting the Emir of Kano, which I have to say was a wonderful experience. I'm not going to talk about intersurgeon because uh, Gail's already mentioned intersurgeon, but clearly that is um, a, a British and American collaborative project. And I'm very proud of that. If anybody has two seconds with their phone and they want to find out about intersurgeon, take a quick snap of that and, uh, and you, you'll get online immediately. Direct surgical teaching. I know, I think Gail's talked about this in the past and many people have the idea that you fly into a country and you show them how to operate and you fly back and you think you've done a good job. It's not about the operating. It's about the infrastructure, the cleanliness even, um, and, and all the things that that patient will die from the minute you fly back to your country. However, there are things that we can do as long as we keep that in mind. And I personally have enjoyed uh, doing that in, in several countries. Um, in fact, this is, this is actually close at home in Greece more recently. And I think, you know, uh, it is quite important that we keep that in mind. Here we have my friend Ahab in, in Cairo, removing the soul of a patient. It's a very impressive picture. 
But the, what we really need to do is to make the training reciprocal. We, in common with the states and various other countries, have had a drastic reduction in the number of hours that we're allowed to work. This is the European Working Time Directive. And this is a typical photograph of my faculty out having dinner. These are the trainees. And again, there's, there are actually only three indigenous British people in that group, uh, something again of which I'm very proud. Um, but you know, here we are with a local training session. And then here we are, completely indistinguishable. This is in North India. And we think that we've got something to, to, to teach people, but we've also got a massive amount to learn from other countries. And these three um, in, in, uh, in Nigeria, and also this lot in India, we're actually starting to have tried to set up formal exchange programs because there are still things that we can teach, even though our hours of work are now limited by statute. But there are things that we and our trainees can learn by coming to work in a much more productive, a much busier, and to be frank, a much more humbling environment. And I'm very much hoping that some of these initiatives will come to fruition. So the SBNS and Global Neurosurgery, a small summary here. Uh, the collaborative research, I think, is, is ongoing and extremely important. I really want to try and increase our presence in world neurosurgery, uh, more for our benefit, frankly, than for that of anybody else. But, you know, if, if we can do anything, that would be wonderful. And I think supporting and creating some of these international endeavors I was alluding to uh, is very important as well. Because let's face it, this chap with driving with one hand with his entire family and no helmet is likely to need the care of all of us at some point. Thank you very much.